Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with news of the 3990X, which is a 64-core, 128-thread behemoth. It is, of course, the flagship of the third-generation Threadripper processors, but it has not been officially announced by AMD. And this is where the rumour mill starts to kick in. So, when AMD officially revealed the existence of the 3960 and 3970X processors, which are 24-core and 32-core respectively, the rumour mill prior to this said that we would see the 64-core teased. Basically, we would get a full list of specifications and some preliminary performance data for the 24 and 32-core processors, and they would maybe tease the existence of the 64-core, but there wouldn't be any in-depth details. It would basically just say, yeah, it's coming at some point, maybe next year. Well... That didn't happen. There has been no teasing of a 64-core processor. I actually sat in, sat in, excuse me, uh, uh, in a press call with AMD, and there was no mention of a 64-core processor at all. They just uh, stated details about the 24 and the 32-core. They said that there was some future usage for the motherboards that they couldn't discuss, which seemed to relate to I.O. and um, scalability, in the words of Robert Halleck from AMD, but they said that they were not willing to go further into the scalability side of the equation, and I.O. Pri uh, primarily came down to the PCIe lanes being PCIe 4 and so on and so on. Okay, so what's happened since then? Why is the internet going all crazy over 64 cores? Well, it comes down to a video which was posted by MSI on their official YouTube account. Now, as you are likely aware, MSI along with Asus, Gigabyte, so on and so on, are all in the process of readying the release of their motherboards because, for those who don't know, the TRX40 motherboards are a different uh, socket, and the reasons behind that are what I just mentioned a few moments ago, uh, PCIe 4 and scalability, whatever that means. Anyway, basically this means that you have no forwards and backwards compatibility, so if you want to buy a third generation processor, then you will need to pick up the TRX40 motherboards, which means that all of these different companies are busy advertising and saying, hey, look at all the products that we're releasing. With MSI, they are pushing the Creator TRX40 motherboard, which I have to say does look rather pretty. And so they put, uh, put a couple of videos on their official YouTube account. No harm, no fail so far, right? Well, in a very short segment in the, um, one of the videos, they happen to have an image of someone sitting in front of the... Uh, computer with task manager open and well you can see the image yourself it does indeed have 64 cores 128 threads running unfortunately there are several things you can take away from this image it almost certainly looks photoshopped to me and it does not look 100% genuine um, and secondly even if it wasn't photoshopped which I'm pretty sure it is you can't see what the processor is I mean this thing could be anything. It literally could be an epic CPU, for all you know. It literally could be anything that is running here. And yes, I do know that the TRX40 motherboard is there, but who knows? Maybe they didn't have enough uh, engineering sample uh, Threadripper processors for the making of this video. Sometimes AMD just ships out a couple of them, and so they had to use an Epic CPU. Some dude in IT at MSI was just like, well, okay, I'm going to be lugging up this server then and connecting it to this. I mean, you, okay, I'm being a bit silly, but you kind of get my point. Like, you can't see any of the details other than the thread count of the processor. Furthermore, from what I understand about the video, it has actually been re-uploaded now, uh, and I missed the original because of of time zones being really, you know, great friends and all. Uh, but, but basically I was sleeping when the video was live. Um, it was kind of in a joking way. 
So it's probable that this was not leaked. It was probably purposeful, just kind of like a hype PR thing. And it has been removed because I'm imagining that AMD were not happy that MSI did this. With all of that said, I have heard a 64 core processor does exist. And this is not me keeping the hype train up. I've said this several times in the past with multiple videos. I I'm almost certain a 64-core processor does exist, but I'm uncertain it's on the TRX40 platform. Um, as you are probably aware, when we first heard of TRX40, there was also TRX80, and this was on, of course, the USB uh, website. And basically, what we could see with the TRX80 and the TRX40 was very little information, but now we know the TRX40 exists. The rumours were that the 32-core processor would be basically content creation focused, and then there would be a 64-core CPU, which would be more like a workstation. And... I did go back into this like a couple of months ago, maybe a month and a half ago, something like that. But as a quick refresher, AMD actually have recently hired a couple of people um, to work on like their workstation marketing and like strategies. Now, this isn't to say that a 64 core processor is definitely going to come out. But according to my sources anyway, there is definitely a 64 core Threadripper processor that they are working on or it exists. Whether they choose to release it is an entirely different matter because the fact of the matter is looking at the 32 core results of the 3970x it ruffle stomps the second generation i know that's not being very technical but i can't say it any other way it just stomps it uh interestingly in amd's own performance slides that they've released they did not include the 29 uh, 2990WX geez all these model numbers instead they put the 3960 and the 3970 together along with the 9980XE from Intel and I would have loved for them to include the previous generation Threadripper processors as well but they didn't however during the press call um, Robert Halleck essentially told us that it was between 40 and 60% faster than the previous generation flagship, which does give you an idea of just how fast these CPUs are. And you also have to take into account that AMD are charging like 2000 bucks for this. Also, if the TRX40 platform is only quad channel, I do wonder if it would have enough memory bandwidth to uh, serve 64 cores. Basically, what I'm telling you is, yeah, um, it probably does exist at some form or another, but MSI having it in their video does not really mean it was accidentally leaked by them, uh, because it's not something you could accidentally leak. I mean, technically it's possible, I suppose, but I just, I don't see a company like MSI accidentally revealing the existence of a 64-core, 128-thread processor... Uh, and then uploading that to YouTube, I just I just don't see it, especially as the image, to me anyway, it looks fake. Okay, <laughs> and now we're going to move over to a different, uh, yeah, uh, now we're going to move over to something different. And now we're going to move over to NVIDIA and the RTX 2080 Ti Super which I am going to refer to the majority of this video as super, because otherwise I will probably go insane by the time the video has been uh, recorded. So this particular GPU is now going to launch in the first quarter of 2021, at least if you believe the rumours. And they have been swirling around the internet thanks to a tweet by kopati 7 Kimi. hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, who is a Twitter account, but they have actually had a pretty good track record. They were accurate in the specifications of the RTX and GTX Super GPUs prior to, the, to their actual launch. So it's not like this particular Twitter user is just some random person who has never posted anything with accurate information. They have actually posted things which have turned out to be very accurate. However, the tweet itself is very short. It just says uh, 2080 Ti Super 2020 Q1. That's it. That's literally it. And there is also no mention about whether it's from a source, whether it's just speculation, whether they were just kind of making a, a off-the-cuff joke, 
whether it was a prediction based upon maybe something they'd heard from AMD, whether it was a certainty and they just felt, well, maybe because Ampere is delayed, which we'll get to that in a moment, they might launch this to kind of keep the PR hype machine going or anything. It was just kind of like, it, that's it. But anyway, several websites have reported that this might be a thing. Uh, the RTX 2080 TLS Super launching in the first quarter of 2020. Now, NVIDIA have categorically gone on record and said that it does not exist. They're not going to launch it, and they have no plans to launch it. But then again, NVIDIA... Well, yeah, they they would say that. Let's just be honest. Um, and they could always spin it and say, well, you know, the market has changed and now we need to launch the card. There have been a couple of pieces of evidence, and I say it in such a tone because it's flimsy at best. The first was uh, an Inno 3D giveaway. Some terms and conditions did list the super variant of the RTX 2080 Ti, but that's for a competition, which means that it could potentially be someone who was an office temp who was tasked to do this. And it's very easy to do a typo if you're just copying and pasting stuff and it's like, you just forget. Imagine you type in RTX 2080, seven, RTX uh, 2070, RTX 2070 Super, RTX 2080, RTX 2080 Ti, and you just go down the list, and it's very easy to accidentally add a super to that, especially if it's just been copying and pasting. So, I don't think that's really that much evidence. The other thing, however, was an EEC filing, a registration document. This was uh, something that Kamichi found about six months ago. However, while it does look like it is a GPU which is similar to to the RTX 2080 Ti, and does look like it's had some specifications changed, we have no information of what those specifications actually are. It could just be faster memory, it could be something entirely different, and furthermore, from what we gather right now anyway, there has been no leaks in terms of like benchmarks or anything else. Does that mean that this does not exist? that the RTX 2080 Ti Super will not launch in the first quarter. I personally would be surprised if it does. Um, I think it really, though, comes down to what AMD can play out of its hat. Because the bottom line is, at the moment, NVIDIA have the fastest card on the market. That's simple. The RX 5700-5700 XTs are really good GPUs. They are. They're amazing GPUs, but... They cannot compete with the RTX 2080 Ti. And honestly, the thing about the Super is, it's not going to be that much faster if it's presumably essentially an RTX uh, Titan. But the last piece of NVIDIA news that I'd like to discuss is the 7NM GPUs from the company have allegedly been delayed, at least for the data center. And this is according to Chris Casso, who is an analyst at the American investment bank Raymond James Financial. And this report, which comes via Seeking Alpha, claims that NVIDIA are planning to launch 7NM GPUs, as, well, we all know. But it's going to be within around six months' time. And this is actually after the launch of what was originally hoped for. Apparently, originally, NVIDIA were hoping to launch the data center products for the end of this year. But obviously, that's not happened. Now... To NVIDIA's credit, they have confirmed in the past that they will be aiming to have substantial GPU orders from Samsung using the 7NM process from the company in 2020. But there is a lot of confusion right now. What is going on with NVIDIA's GPU products and also what exactly Ampere is? There are some people who maintain that Ampere is not actually going to come to gamers at all. Other people have whispered that, yes, Ampere definitely is for gamers, and it will have um, products specifically designed for the data center, HPC, but also products which are altered and tweaked, designed for gaming, a little bit like the approach NVIDIA took with Pascal. Obviously, at the moment, you've got Volta uh, for the data center and so on, and then we didn't get a variant of Volta. We had to wait until Turing. 
Although, arguably, we kind of did get an evolved version of Volta with Turing, because many of the architectural tweaks that uh, were inherent in the um, Volta architecture, of course, were present with the Turing architecture. It's going to be really interesting what NVIDIA actually are doing with their 7nm GPUs. I don't think they're in a rush, though, to launch them. At this point, I predict, and this is not based upon a leak, this is just my prediction, that when it comes to the gaming side of the equation, they're going to want to focus on improving the weaknesses of the Turing architecture. I suspect that they don't want to release 7nm GPUs in the GeForce lineup, but then have poor yields, which would obviously increase the price of the of the graphics cards. Furthermore, they would also like to improve ray tracing performance as much as possible. Because, well, let's be honest, it was the biggest criticism of Turing. It looks beautiful. I don't think anyone would argue that looking at a game like Control with ray tracing, it looks bloody amazing. I mean, it does. And... I will admit, personally, and I suspect you will probably feel differently, but personally, I would rather deal with a softer image, play a little bit further from the screen, and play with ray tracing enabled and DLSS on, and enjoy the reflections of control. But I realise not everyone feels like that, and the performance hit of ray tracing is tangible. You can feel it. It's not like, oh, I'm losing 5 or 10 or 20% performance. No, it, it tanks performance, particularly at higher resolutions like 1440p. RTX 2080 Ti is generally okay if you don't want to play at really high frame rates. But 4K, yeah, no. Unless, once again, you are doing DLSS. So, there is a lot of questions at the moment, to be honest, what's going on with Ampere. And no one really knows outside of NVIDIA what's going on. I've tried to reach out to sources and no one's no one's saying anything. They're being ridiculously tight-lipped. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, the normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.